OK, so Scotland were facing England today in the opening weekend of this year's Six Nations at Murrayfield. They have come out victorious, narrowly. However, major turning point in the second half. And I will have a little rant about that turning point in the second half because it's the same thing with England. England keep doing this. It is frustrating to watch. Now, yes, I've been you know, raised in England most of my life, or I've born overseas. But this is a Calcutta Cup match. doesn't fail to disappoint. There's always action, drama and controversy in a Calcutta Cup match. Not as high scoring as I thought it would be. Scotland better defensively than I thought they would be. But actually, if you look at the recent stats, that makes sense. Um, Marcus Smith scored all of England's points. Crucial for them, I can see him being very important in this year's Six Nations. He had a very, very good game. England implode after he goes off the field. That could is there coincidence there, or is that an actual thing? Uh, Finn Russell had one of his better games, uh, which is also important for Scotland. And Ben White scores on debut. So there's there's some real interesting things, but we'll get to the penalty try on the yellow card in a minute. Now, Ben White comes on as, a, as an HIA replacement. He's actually played for the England under-21s. So England's loss is Scotland's gain. In his 10-minute cameo before he comes on as a sub later on in the second half, Scotland's only meaningful attack, and he scores. And Darcy Graham, I think it's not the pass to Darcy Graham, it's Darcy Graham's line, his run, and then his offload, I think, make that try. Uh, England's defence, too passive. Too passive. Sorry. Um, England's defence, too passive. Uh, Marchand, he's, he's backing up, backing up, backing up. He's not aggressive enough in defence. He's too passive in defence. He's nervous. He's, he's on the back foot in defence. Wrong-footed. Um, yeah, Ben White's try, brilliant piece of play by Scotland. Finn Ross also gets a penalty in the first half. Marcus Smith with his two penalties. Um, his first one would look like a bit a bit wobbly, but he, he got it over. Uh, but Marcus Smith has a very good game. Uh, he was crucial in the beginning of the second half. So England, Scotland going 10-6 at half time, and their defence has allowed them to go in 10-6 at half time. England wasted a lot of opportunities and a lot of ball. They're playing more in the middle third of the pitch. And they had very few incursions into the 22, but they were controlling possession. So you would think they're going to wear Scotland down. And that is the case at the beginning of the second half. England have won the arm wrestle at this point. Scotland are getting a bit beat up. They're losing the arm wrestle. They're doing more than they're tackling more. A lot of defence. They're not getting their hands on the ball in attack as much as they would like because they have a very threatening attack. And so England's game plan of wearing Scotland down, because it was raining, there was wind been a lot of rain uh, uh, the further north you go, uh, a lot of snow as well uh, with, with recent storms. So the weather was favouring England's game plan, although England were being expansive as well. And, and Marcus Smith is crucial to that. He scores a penalty, he scores his try, and he scores another penalty to round out England's scoring. He scores all 17 of England's points. He does miss the conversion for his try, which in the end of things, England would have still lost even with that conversion. But for the first 63 minutes, England are the better side. And they've now started to win the arm wrestle. The turning point comes when Cowan Dickey ends up in defence on the wing. And there are two crossfield kicks by Finn Russell. England deal with the first one. Scotland recycle the ball. Finn Russell sees that Cowan Dickey is against Darcy Graham on the wing. Now, Darcy Graham in defence has not been catching the ball. That's been... That's been um, uh, other players, other backline players have been taking that responsibility because he is a smaller man. He's only five foot eight. But in attack, given a good run up, he can get height. Cowan Dickey is a front row forward. He's the hooker. Now, Cowan Dickey, he has an opportunity to catch that. I, it, it is a complete and utter. <sighs> I've got no sympathy for him. He deserves to be yellow carded. It's deservedly a penalty try because he could have caught that ball. Um, or at least made an attempt to catch the ball, he deliberately slaps that out. Um, and he also hurts himself in the process and doesn't reappear. Um, and that has actually cost England the game. That last 14 minutes, the yellow car, the penalty try, Finn Russell's penalty following after the penalty try on 66 minutes, on 72 minutes. But it's then England's decision-making after that, which um, is frustrating, uh, really. Especially with the amount of rugby I've watched, especially in this channel's existence, since 2017, the amount of rugby I've watched over the last five and a half years. Um, and with England performances, the penalty count is too high. And up to that point, they had only had six or seven penalties against them. Scotland had double the penalty count. So for once, England are not on the, the wrong end of the penalty count until that yellow card and penalty try. After that, their discipline completely disappears. Joe Marler, for a while, is the stand-in hooker. Even though they got Jamie George on the 
bench. That that was a weird decision to to um, take off uh, Underhill uh, and um, not Underhill, uh, the number eight, and and and, and have Joe Marler trying to throw the ball in. Uh, ri ri ridiculous. And then when they have Scotland pinned with penalties. They should have gone for the post to at least tie the game up. Then you know you, you've got a couple because you've got to be receiving the ball again, you know, when they kick off. And um, they go for touch, and Jamie George is not as accurate as Cowan Dickey on the line-out. Cowan Dickey has not missed a line-out in last year's Six Nations or in this match. Jamie George is not as good from the line-out. He has weaker stats. And on a pressure situation, Scotland pinched the ball. That's a decision that has left me scratching my head. And then with all the scrums trying to scrummage for a penalty, you know you've got George Ford in the pocket, using for a drop goal. Get the ball out quickly. Um, they want to try and get the penalty. But if you know you've got a fly half who can drop the ball and get a drop goal um, on his foot, he, he's not that far out. It would have been quite a simple drop goal. Um, and they try and scrum for the penalty. Instead of going to George Ford, who has stood there, they try and spread it right and try and go for the winning try. Um, yeah. Same old, same old with England. Uh, Scotland deserve their win because their defence stood up to uh, an onslaught. Weathered the storm. They get some territory, get some possession in England's half, and they come away with points. Um England had a lot of possession in Scotland's half and didn't come away with the points as much as they should have. Even though Marcus Smith scores all 17 of England's points and had a fantastic game, after he goes off, the game management goes to pot, the discipline goes to pot, and uh, the, the decision-making was not good enough. And this is not something that's just happened overnight. Yes, there's some new combinations and there's, you know, some fresh faces in the England squad. You know, a lot of changes, there's players are injured, there's players suspended, there's players unavailable for health reasons, whatever it may be. But this is not a new problem for England. This is a long-standing issue. Uh, and Scotland weren't great uh, uh, on the discipline front themselves today. Um, and that, I think, contributed to the tightness of the game alongside the weather. But I will tell, I will say this. This is not a new problem for England. This doesn't have, have, just happened overnight. They finished fifth last year in the Six Nations. So there are warning signs with with the England setup at least that they've peaked at the World Cup. I have no doubt about that. How they got to that World Cup final with how they played leading up to it is a bit of a head scratcher. So the World Cup finalists in 2019. Fast forward to 2020, they finished uh, 2021, sorry, they finished fifth in the Six Nations. And yes, you could say COVID has impacted things over the last two years, and that is fine. But their discipline is still poor, their decision making is still poor, and their game management is still poor. So the same issues that were there in place before the World Cup are still there, still are raising their ugly head, and um, it's cost them the win today because they were in a commanding position when Marcus Smith leaves the field. They scored no points after he leaves the field. Now, yes, he scored all of England's points today, but that is a, a notable substitution. Their discipline gets worse after that change. Now, is that on Tom Curry, the captain, his first match as captain? Or is that on the wider collective of the squad? Or is that also partly on the coaching setup, making the changes when they do? Because this is the same issues over and over over again. Scotland, on that performance defensively, they did very, very well. I think when they play Ireland, I think that is going to be the true test of Scotland's improved defence in the last two seasons, because if you actually look at the stats, they actually have got much, much better defensively. Um, two, three, four years ago, not so great. The World Cup, I think, was the low point. I think they've, they've learned the lessons from the World Cup. Defensively, much improved and that has borne out today um, but they need to get more possession I think so when they have the opportunity to turn the ball over instead of kicking it away which they did do a lot today they need to keep ball in hand because they look very threatening and attack as well 
Um, they're still a bit Jekyll and Hyde, but much improved from Scotland. England, ah, it's just frustrating watching them. Uh, just as a rugby fan, um, you know, uh, it's, it's frustrating. You want to rip your hair out. Um, but England threw that game away. And, and, and Scotland, on the basis of their defence alone, I think, I think deserve something from the game, and they and they rightly get it. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below, and I will have some more videos for you soon. We've got another FA Cup match coming up this evening. I think it's seven forty-five or an eight o'clock kickoff. So I'm going to get ready for that. And of course, we all have the African Cup of Nations final tomorrow. We have some more FA Cup football tomorrow in Nottingham Forest, Leicester, and of course we have France, Italy. So I've got to basically cherry pick what I'm going to watch. There's a lot of things to watch, and as I say that. My neighbours have put their washing machine on, so now my ceiling is vibrating. So all in all, it's fun living in a block of flats. It's been fun watching the sport I have today, and there's still more sport to come. So with that, I leave you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.